Hello, from the Griffith Observatory's grounds in Los Angeles. My name is David Richard Sanis. I must say a few words about myself, so that my words have a mere possibility of being listened to and read in this internet era. At the age of three, I was reading the Seattle Times and the Seattle Post Intelligencer newspapers cover to cover. At the age of seven, I tested as having the reading comprehension level of a college graduate. I achieved an IQ score of 200 on the Iowa Standard, the Princeton Stanford, the Princeton Standard, the Stanford Binet, and the Army's ABC tests for intelligence. At the age of 22, I served as the National Security Agency's Deputy Chief of Station for the Central Third of South Vietnam. As a counterintelligence agent, I was responsible for the security of this nation's secret communications in the Central Highlands of South Vietnam. At the age of 22, I was also directed by Dernza, the Director of NSA, to spy on all top secret only traffic in and out of Lyndon Baines Johnson's White House and to notify Dernza of any factual mistakes in any such transmissions. At the age of 26, I was hired by the Boeing Aircraft Company as an engineer in Boeing's elite, quote, court of last resort, quote, engineering team to solve engineering problems that any of Boeing's divisions could not solve. My first week at the Boeing Company, I was named Boeing's Engineer of the Month for the entire company. Within six months, I was elevated to reporting only to a select committee of the Board of Directors of the Boeing Company. My mission was to solve engineering problems that other engineering groups could not solve. For the last 40 years, I have been an expert witness in many billions of dollars worth of construction related litigation. Acting as an expert witness in structural engineering, civil engineering, soils engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, architecture, and all the disciplines of construction of buildings, bridges, and assorted types of structures. But my lifelong passion has been cosmology, physics, and magnetism. Today, I want to make a report to the suffering humanity of this planet about the status of my work. Sanus's Theory of Everything, dated July 2, 2010, by David Richard Sanus. First, I thank God that a creative genius at Stern, S-T-E-O-R-N, in Dublin, Ireland, did an experiment in 2006 that led them to confirm the practical implications of my work. It is the only hope that I see for the survival of the human race. I love their January 30th, 2010 proof of principle tests of my following scientific work. It was so simple. I similarly thank J. L. Nadine, the great French engineer and scientist, for his proof of principal test device. Sanus's theory of everything, preface. Experimental results of testing of my dark matter motor prototype conclusively prove that its output energy exceeds the input energy. My exemplary rotary and piston embodiments of this over-unity technology can be built and operated by anyone for the purpose of scientific research with my permission. The over-unity test results of the dark matter motor test stand prove that multiplied output energy does not come from neodymium iron boron magnets metal at all, but rather from disturbances in the fields permeating and surrounding the metal. Since electrostatic accretion 
magnetic attractive and repulsive forces. Electromagnetic and gravitational forces exist throughout the universe. One is inexorably led to the following logical conclusions. Space and time did not come into existence with the last Big Bang at time zero. Beyond the spherical universe, space and time do exist. Einstein understood that gravity was tugging at every bit of matter, so the universal bubble had to collapse into a big crunch under its own weight. So Einstein made up the cosmological constant, a lambda not notation, and a lambda being simply the sign of infinity from Greek language, that expressed that empty space is not really empty at all. It has a latent energy Friedman's mathematics and Hubble's astronomical observations toppled the lambda sign in general relativity. Einstein denounced it as his greatest blunder. My work, specifically my finding of the Schuyler particles by experiment, brings it back into the mainstream of physics. Christian Huygens, quote, unspecified medium of the transmission of light, like sound is a vibration in the air, close quote, is Schuyler dark matter energy that is equally distributed throughout the universe. Newton's three laws of motion must now give way to Schuyler dark matter energy theory mandated modifications. When Einstein observed, quote, <clears throat> for if no particular state of motion can be ascribed to the ether, there does not seem to be any ground for introducing it as an entity of a special sort, close quote. There was scant evidence of a Schuyler quantum soup universe. Dark matter motor test results likewise force the necessary modifications of the applicable work of Faraday, Maxwell, Hertz, Huygens, Fresnel, and Planck, among others. Fresnel's ether hypothesis was correct as far as it went. The H. A. Lorentz electrodynamic theory failed, moreover, to give an explanation concerning the tremendous forces which hold the electric charges on the individual particles. Close quote by Albert Einstein. As Einstein once wrote, quote, now a question arises. Since the electromagnetic field exists even in a vacuum, should one conceive of the field as a state of a carrier, or should it rather be endowed with an independent existence not reducible to anything else? In other words, is there an ether which carries the field? My answer is yes. Meanwhile, particle theorists have realized that the cosmological constant can be interpreted as a measure of the, quote, energy density of the vacuum, close quote. It is a measure of the observable energy of the Schuyler in the vacuum. Even the conception of Bonn and Heisenberg, that the physical world could be regarded either in terms of waves or particles, is rendered susceptible to reanalysis by the prototype dark matter motor test results. Planck's law of radiation must now incorporate Schuyler theory. Planck's universal constant quote, N, close quote, and Schuyler theory requires science to find a new conceptual basis for all physics. My experiments result in confirmation of the statement, quote, quantum mechanics adds another contribution from the zero point energies associated with vacuum fluctuations, close quote. The fact discovered by Faraday in 1831 that an electric current can be induced to flow in a coil of copper wire when a magnet is brought close to it can now be explained. It is a disturbance in the Schuyler fields of dark energy and matter. Ampere's circuital law and Gauss's law must both be modified to account for Schuyler theory. The same is true for Coulomb's law. Electric and magnetic forces are part of a single physical phenomenon as special relativity postulates. Both are powered by dark matter Schuyler energy. The Biot-Savart law 
must also be modified to include Schuyler theory. Michelson morally did not preclude the Schuyler particle ether. Einstein's special theory of relativity and photoelectric effect did not destroy it. Scientists should look again at Einstein's statements, quote, if Michelson morally is wrong, then relativity is wrong, close quote. Einstein did miss the Schuyler particle ether, and that forces modifications to the photoelectric effect, special and general theory of relativity assumptions, and conclusions. Sanus's theory of everything. In 1932, as is commonly known, the existence of neutrons was discovered at Cambridge University. That same most extraordinary site of scientific research had previously been involved in the realization that the entire sensible universe is made up of but 92 different atoms. More interestingly still, with the discovery of the neutron, it was evident that all atoms, from hydrogen to uranium, were made up of only three different elements, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Said protons, neutrons, and electrons in the 92 different atoms that exist in nature create each type of atom by being in different numbers in different arrangements. And that's an incredibly important principle. The universe is uniformly filled in a stable but dynamic manner with astonishingly tiny, nearly massless particles. These particles' axial rotations generate neutral charges of static electricity. The bubble universe may be envisioned as a balloon tightly packed with these particles, eternally jostling a myriad of others, spitting static electrical charges. These static electrical charges repel all identical particles and refuel all other types of particles. For example, the reason that photons can maintain a constant speed of 186,000 miles per second as they travel across the universe for billions of years is that these dark particles refuel them perhaps four to six billion times a second at quantum distances as they pass by. I name these dark particles as Schuylers. Collectively, Schuyler particles refuel all other particles in the universe with static charges of electricity. Schuylers constitute all but less than one trillionth of one trillionth of the total matter and energy of the universe. What we humans think of as dark, empty space, dotted with, quote, sparse points of light, close quote, is actually uniformly filled with Schuylers, carrying their eternally sparking static electricity. The unimaginable shortness of distances between Schuyler particles on all sides and the quantum size of static electric sparks gives human the incorrect belief that space is dark and almost empty. Interplanetary and interstellar dust, comets, asteroids, moons, planets, galaxies, and even local groups of galaxies taken together are but mere flecks of, quote, spice, close quote, in a clear soup Schuyler universe. All particles larger than Schuyler particles are completely permeable to Schuyler particles. <laughs>